Hey, what's up YouTube? So after a couple days doing reviews on all four of these controllers, I have to say, just so you know, I have the most time with the Xbox 360 controller. I've been using it for over a month on and on from Tetris to fighter games. But for this review, I played a couple of all the systems with all these controllers. And then I also, we had a Tetris marathon where we would play Tetris on the MAME system, where on MAME, you have to use the analog stick to move the blocks around and then you gotta use some of these buttons to go down faster. And then on the Final Burn Alpha, we like Tetris uh, Plus 2 is our game. Uh, so a lot of Tetris Plus 2 on Final Burn Alpha, where you use the D-pad, and then on MAME, where you actually use the analog sticks. And then we would go with whoever lost, whoever won, whichever controller won would then go against the next controller. And uh, as far as Tetris goes, the order would go something like this one first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, this one, in the feedback on the, on the analog sticks is not very good. You would misplace the block occasionally. It wasn't very accurate. And these buttons over here actually don't, um, they stick a little bit. They don't have as much pushback as these buttons do. So it's just a little laggy or slow. You can kind of feel it when you're playing. Now, this is for Tetris. If I was to do this based on like a Ray's image where you have Nintendo 64 games and, and, and MAME games and all these other systems, the order of these controllers would go like this. First place, second place, third place, fourth place. This one, I actually had to redo this video because in the at one point I actually had the results like this. First, second, third, fourth. And the more I played with this controller, I really liked it at first because it has a really good feel in your hand. Amazing feel, love it. But as you play with it, you, you realize that it wasn't manufactured very well. Like these do not work very well. They're not as uh, crisp and responsive and accurate as you would want them. And these buttons over here are a little bit slow. The grip itself and the D-pad and the triggers are just fine. It's really in this area here and the analog sticks. So that puts it over here. This controller is great. The only reason I'm putting it forth is it doesn't play. You can't. You don't have a, an analog stick on it. So that's why it gets here. If you love Super Nintendo or you love Nintendo, by all means get this. Now when it came between these two, it was very difficult. This was a close race. They both feel great in your hand. This one is a little lighter and I mentioned that in the review, but as you get used to it, the lightness doesn't become an issue as much. It's only when you're just holding it now and you're not playing anything. But once you start playing something, it's totally fine. I'd say the biggest downside to this is it doesn't have the feedback, the vibration that this one has. I, I would say the main, the main reason why this one was just the respon the overall responsiveness mm -hmm. and the D-pad. The D-pad on here is superior than the D-pad on here. The analog sticks are very comparable, except for the location. As far as the location uh, for Tetris, it wasn't really a big deal. For fighting games, depending on that, it might be uh, more important to you. But uh, here's the order. We have first, second, third, fourth. All these controllers can be had for around $20 on Amazon. If you're interested, there's links below. If you could please like and subscribe this video, and we'll see you guys next time.